everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Melanin Muses podcast. And for those of you who are unaware, we are now officially in spooky season. Hey! Spooky! It's the um, most wonderful time of the year. We're going to be discussing ghouls, goblins, frights, and most of all, fear. Oh, fear. Literally, what keeps you up at night? What keeps all of us up at night? What keeps you from doing what you want to do or hinders you? Literally, I'll start right now. Fear, the definition, to put it plainly, is an unpleasant emotion caused by belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Now, usually the beginning of October or something, we would definitely talk about like, you know, Halloween and stuff and, you know, scary movies. But let's definitely talk about fear before any of that, because that's the whole definition. That's why we like this stuff. That's why we even have a whole month dedicated to it. And I'm looking up some stuff about fear and oh, my God, it's actually a couple of things I didn't even know or didn't even consider. Like one of the things. Tell us, Quay. Tell us. Tell us. Definitely, fear is going to show your true self. Who are you in this moment? Your fight or flight moment. Or do you fight or do you flight? Do you run or do you beat ass? <laughs> do you freeze or do you fawn? Do you Plead for your life. <laughs> exactly. Do you talk and... to the kid on the bus or do you actually save the kid for the bus? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that nigga's going to die. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> It's happening too fast. <laughs> oh my god! But I'll leave these. I'll have these couple points though. I will say what fear is. Fear is physical. Fear can make you foggy. Fear can become pleasure. Yeah. Fear is not a phobia. That is an entirely different thing. And fear keeps you safe. Now let's at least talk about the physical standpoint, because. When you're scared, what though happens to your body? Short oh, you freeze literally up, short. you get shaky, you get Tense, anxiety, heart literal problems. force, yeah, literal like 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 you're stressed, you're hyper aware, you're sweating, your palms get probably get really sweaty. Mom's shortness of breath. You're shaking and your metabolism just stops. Oh God. God, if my metabolism ever just stopped on me. God, don't fail me now. But as soon as you recognize fear, your, I'm going to butcher this word, it's the small organ in the middle of your brain, the amygdala. Amy amygdala. Yeah, the amygdala. <laughs> Those will work. It alerts your nervous system, which sets your body's fear response into motion. Stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline are released. Your blood pressure and heart rate increase. That rhymed. You start breathing faster. Even your blood flow changes. Blood actually flows away from your heart and into your limbs, making it easier for you to start throwing punches, beating ass, or run for your life. Huh. Now, I have a question. What? Some of the times that you've been incredibly afraid. What Ooh. was the moment? Were you about to run or were you about to or were you about to throw hands? So I I have a story right off the bat. Um, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Kelly here, I am huge on haunted houses. I love them. Like they're the peak experience of adrenaline for me other than roller coaster rides. And so back when I was a young children, my brother and I went with our father on a business trip to Niagara Falls. At the time, Niagara Falls had this really spooky house haunted house there right on the cusp of New York and Canada and I was begging my dad to let us go into this haunted house my brother has always been a chicken little he hates that stuff I love it mm. so my dad surprised us by taking us inside tell me how we get to the counter and I'm looking around all hype and excited my brother and I are looking around we go to the counter and a trap door opens behind the person at the register <clears throat> I lie to you not I blinked and I was across the street. That's good. So we can say that my amygdala was hijacked and I sprinted out there faster than I could think. That's great. And you know why? Because you took no time at all to think or ascertain the situation. All you need to know is that you need to be away 
from this right now. I didn't even see what it was. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. I feel like that's even like part of like the black soul too. As soon as we don't fuck with something, nah, I ain't wasting energy. I'm running. That's crazy. You're crazy if you think I'm trying to stay up. I, I, I mean, I feel like, so y'all, I'm half black and I'm half white. And it all depends on which side of the, 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 the train that's going to take over for me, depending on the situation. Because I have my black moments where I dip out real quick. I'm like, I'm not messing with that shit. And then there's those white moments where I'm like, ooh, what's happening here? I'm like, oh, damn. Well, gee willikers, what is that? <laughs> Not like, but for real though, I, I, it depends on the situation for me because as a kid, I was a super scaredy cat. Like I, I hated scary things. Like the thing that scared me the most was Chucky. I fucking hate Chucky so much. My mom wants to buy a Chucky doll. I'm like, not while I'm here. You try to get that damn doll, I'm out. <laughs> like, you not, I'm no, I don't trust that thing. I know what's a movie, but I don't trust that thing. I'm not waking up to see that shit standing in my doorway with a knife. I'm gonna eat that shit out the window. Um, I got so scared as a kid from that damn show. I remember my cousin, rest his soul, but when we were little, he was an asshole. He made me watch Chucky. When I was like six or seven, if even, I yeeted all my dolls out the window because <laughs> mm. I thought they were going to kill me. <laughs> oh, no, not the Bratz dolls, not the Barbies. I know. Yeah. It, it was wild. But as an adult, um, if I have to protect someone or I feel the need to protect, I tend to fight. My fight instinct comes in. My secondary instinct about to take care of myself doesn't really, it kind of goes out the window. It's just like, Oh, someone who is quote unquote weaker than me or not stronger, strong enough to take care of themselves. They need help. No one else is helping them. Let me jump in that shit. Not the smartest idea, but that's what instantly clicks in my brain. Um, like, for example, when I was in Korea, an incident happened where there was a physical altercation and I was the one that got attacked. But while I was in the middle of holy shit, what just happened? I heard my friend yell and that's what snapped me and like, oh shit, is she okay? Mm -hmm. And I didn't even feel anything. I didn't even really recognize what happened. My instinct was, is she okay? And that's why everyone was like, oh my God, did she get hit? I was like, no, I got punched in the face. She's just upset. So can y'all step away for a second? She needs, I need to get her to calm down. And so that's, that's when it comes, that's what happens with me. It's like, if I have to protect somebody else, that's when my fight instinct or like this girl was super drunk and her quote unquote friends left her there halfway passed out on the table. These guys are trying to coerce her to come out with them. I had to go over there because I'd be like, where are your friends at? No one came back. So I stepped out and be like, y'all need to back the fuck up because this is basically predator behavior. And there was three of them and I, they're like twice the height. And I'm just like, nigga, that is, that don't is. start. You guys are getting real rapey. That's, that's, mm -mm. uh-huh. And they left. The moment I stepped away, they went right back. And I had to cuss their asses out. I'm like, listen, you we're both foreigners in this country. You want to try me? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so when it comes to me, if I can, if I have to protect somebody or I feel the need to protect someone, I will fight. But if it's just me by myself, then I tend to, like, step away. And, like, I don't want any craziness, especially if I'm by myself, because I know nobody's probably going to back me up. <laughs> so let me de-escalate and step away from the situation unless absolutely necessary. Um, so at least that's me. <laughs> I did respect you for for taking it upon yourself to actually save someone that actually needs help and stuff. Because fear can definitely keep you from doing something like that. Mm -hmm. If it's yourself individually, you're probably going to run. You don't need to fight. What do you have to prove? Right. But, but if someone actually is in danger that actually needs help and no one else is lifting a finger or you need to react in that moment at that moment or else if you wait too long, they're going to they're going to get really hurt or something's going to happen. Then, yeah, that shows again what we just said that shows who you are as a person. And that's great. It's nice to know that if we ever had to throw hands at the club and we were all at the club and shit happened, like someone challenged me to a dance battle or some shit. And yeah, I know I, I, I'm proud to know that you'll beat ass with me. That's of great. Of course. I'm gonna be right there with you, Quake. I'm like, yo, homie, mm -hmm. not gonna be messing with my boy over here. What's up? Come talk to me. Let's go outside for a second. And then I'll leave you there and go back in and dance. <laughs> oh and be like, yo, security, he acting a mess. Bye. <laughs> now this does now this does bring up 
this does this is a good segue to the two other parts where fear can make you foggy and fear can become pleasure from both from two from one thing from each of what you said one when fear can make you foggy mm -hmm. some parts in your brain are revving up and others are shutting down yeah so when the amygdala is that how i say it is that how i say it amygdala amygdala the amygdala senses fear <laughs> in the cerebral cortex <laughs> and it's the area of the brain that's uh that harnesses reasoning and judgment that becomes impaired so now it's super difficult to make good decisions or think clearly and what you just said which oh hey this probably isn't a good idea i'm probably gonna get hurt from doing this but i'm gonna do it anyway because they need help and stuff that's most likely your brain being impaired where you're like, ah, I'm trying to, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. No, you're too revved up. You got to do something about it. You go back to reptile brain. <laughs> <laughs> Acting off instinct. We love it. Yes. But to the second part where fear can be pleasure, what you said, we're roller coasters, scary movies, uh, yeah, uh, 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 horror houses and stuff, scare houses. <laughs> Sounds like you said horror house. You said horror house. <laughs> Hey, a whorehouse can be scary. Some of those Lord girls, mercy. No, no, Fair, that, but yo, some some stuff in intimacy can be scary, but totally hot. Not, oh, very no. scary. Can't and you, oh, and oh. part of that, yeah, no, you go, you go. You go. <laughs> go. Oh, what? Well, oh, schnitzel. Um, basically, I read recently, um, there are, so basically, Fight or flight is our warning signs, like you mentioned, that we're in danger and that, you know, we could potentially get hurt doing this. But some people, their fight or flight is actually tied to their arousal. So that kind of really ties into what you're saying in that, like, recognizing the red flags. Mm -hmm. Some people see it as a carnival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, that flag scares the hell out of me, but it's so hot. And it's kind of like, what? Sounds about right. Like, what is. With you people like that, it's kind of yeah. hard to differentiate between healthy, you know, relationships because they're kind of like, no, I, I, I want to die. You like, I want to feel like I'm dying yeah. every time I'm with this person, and it's great. You know, it's crazy, probably because uh, it literally has some to do, like again, with our brains, but it's has some to do with the <clears throat> sensation that you get. The sensation the nerves of your genitals that nerve in your brain is dangerously close to that nerve in your brain so let's say someone has like a foot fetish yeah no that's connected no that's no that's dangerously close to your brain your genitals and your feet are super close in your brain and stuff that's also has something to do with your fear as well what's close to that it's I so learned. weird human bodies so are weird, but that's wild and then so but then think about it now your brain is just releasing huge amounts of dopamine now. Now you're happy. Now you're excited. And what makes it even more exciting is that you know for sure that you're actually not in danger. So if you go into a scare house, it's super scary. Super scary. Things are popping out of you, at, uh, like at you, like long, dark corridors and stuff. You hear all the creaks. You hear witches laugh. You hear someone go, let me kiss him, you lie, little whore, like shit like that. But you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get out and it's going to be fun. And at the end of the day, you're still riding on that fear. That's why really good, scary movies, you leave and you're like still pumped up and revved up. You're still riding that dopamine high and stuff, which I think is super cool. But also, oh, heck yeah. Very scary because holy shit, what you just said, red flags. Oh, no. What I learned, your gut feeling, that is your fight or flight telling you to leave. Don't do that. Don't do that. And we actually misinterpret that as butterflies and oh i love this person i feel this when i'm near them that's that's a great no nigga you gotta leave that's the exact opposite of who you should be with right now <laughs> but it's it feels so fun and spontaneous <laughs> nah bitch nah. All right, uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> see, see on that note quickly before we forget it's like what speaking of fear what do you consider your biggest fear now as an adult? Ooh, the unknown. Mm, into the, the unknown. The un, the un, well, it's a fusion. The unknown and my own imagination. You, No matter what, I feel like we're going to assume the worst immediately. 
you're going to immediately think you're going to fail at something, especially if you don't know how to do this summer, especially if you already have pre-existing like, you know, an, uh, like anxiety things like uh, that, you, uh, like that, like you go through, like getting a new job, meeting new people, going out to go order something or going into a huge crowd of people and you don't know a single motherfucker there and stuff or going into a new neighborhood is this neighborhood safe what if that dude's a diddler you just went on that site you found a lot of red dots that's crazy there's a lot of them oh my god are we really safe and then you go further out you start learning them uh, like uh, like certain news which news is more trustworthy than uh, 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 uh like than others and stuff are we really safe is what i'm doing really safe and then you end up doing it and you find out oh actually it wasn't that bad no it wasn't that bad I feel like at the end of the day, your imagination will be the scariest thing. And it will obviously give you so much fear and stuff. I can't tell you how many times I've been afraid of my own thoughts and not like a help, but like, a oh, man, I really hyped that up for like no reason. Like I got it done in like 20 minutes. Why was that so scary to me? Why was that so scary to me to, to do and stuff? I think that's why also why scary movies aren't that scary anymore. If anything, it's a scary story that's gonna freak you out. Because now you're just thinking about what what can this thing look like? This thing, this thing or person that can hurt me, or that can hurt me in the story. What does it look like? What is this? And yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna piggyback off of that. Yeah, I used to be huge into into scary movies, like you know, the classics, Michael Myers films, <laughs> all of them. Um but they were never scary to me as a child. I was more intrigued by the visuals that were given. I ventured into scary stories. And I think the ones that freak me out the most are the ones that have like sound effects, like gory uh, things that help to produce those images in your head of what's actually happening. Those are the ones that fuck me up. Like there's a scary one. story podcast that I listen to um, called the No Sleep Podcast. And there was one episode called, I think, The Trail or The Running Trail. And mm -hmm. it was about a guy who jogs or runs for a living. And he gets into the forest to the normal stump that he goes to, but he encounters this creature, this horrible freaking creature. Mm -hmm. The description of this creature was so grotesque that I could see it in my mind's eye, but I but also hear it and smell it, and it uh, fucked me up. I bet it smells putrid. But what really scares me is real life true crime stuff. Because you know what? Yes. With my profession, I see that. Oh, say less. <laughs> so I see the darkness in people's hearts oh, yeah. up close and personal, and the potential that harbors there. So seeing true crime television shows and episodes and things mm. bothers me because the flags are always there. Oh yeah, always. But whether or not we choose to acknowledge them is why it's so scary that people ignore them. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right. don't see that? But they don't. You motherfuckers, really, you motherfuckers really followed Jeffrey Dahmer in his house to go watch a fucking movie? What the fuck, bro? But can I give you guys two scenarios that always creep me out as a kid? What? Going downstairs and all the lights are turned off. You gotta go downstairs. You gotta go downstairs. You That's gotta go a primal fear. Water. Or, 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 when you get older and you and you go through the garage door and now the garage door is about to close. Well, someone crawls in there. Now it's in there with you. Can you not? <laughs> or, or classic, or classic. Parent tells you to go take out the trash and it's dark as fuck outside literal spongebob moment like, it's dark out there you're oh, like taking out the trash were, i thought you were a big girl i thought you were a big boy go take out the trash <laughs> <laughs> oh my god cleo please what, what scares you oh damn yeah. um what scares me okay psychologically speaking i guess just being completely alone and hated and unloved because my personality predominantly thrives on connection and connecting to other people and learning about them and helping lift people up and just building those bonds with people so i i already know firsthand when i go through isolation and don't have any connections how much of a toll that takes on me and how 
severely detrimental it could be to my mental and my emotional health. So to be able to not have anyone at all, I think that terrifies me the most. Um, especially like the concept, the thinking of dying alone and not necessarily needing to be in a relationship, but dying by myself and not having anyone who cares about me, like close friends or family who even cared that I died. Mm. Um, I, when I go, I want to be surrounded by people I love, you know, so that way I know I can, I know I left a good impact. I know I left a positive legacy. Um, and people actually, I, I made such an impact on someone else's life. They actually cared enough to see me go or mourn me when I die or celebrate my life after I die. Um, so that's one thing that terrifies me. And then like, I guess the other thing is similar to what Callie said was seeing the darkness in people because I've seen some really, really dark sides of people and it's terrifying. And watching true crime or psychological thrillers, um, even some psychological thrillers that are technically not based on reality, but there's bits of truth in almost everything that you watch because mm -hmm. they have to base that off of something, right? Mm -hmm. That is what scares me of how dark people can go how psychopathic, sociopathic, how people can, for example, torturing animals, like puppies and kittens and whatever, just for fun. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how can you do that? Mm -hmm. And then seeing the darkness of how that progresses to children, mm -hmm. to that, how that progresses to elders, how that progresses to people actually taking another person's life and being okay with that, you know? And psychologically, how you can kind of manipulate someone else to just see another person as an object so they won't really take on the full effect that they took another person's life, mm -hmm. you know? So it scares me of how dark humanity can get, especially with stuff that happens behind the scenes, like the human trafficking, um, you know, Law and Order SVU, all the scenarios that happen in there, like that shit happens in real life, you know? It may be an episode of Law and Order, but they base this off a of true crime, you know? So just learning to the extent people can go and not have any remorse about it scares the crap out of me. And it's kind of finding that line of some people seem perfectly normal and then they turn out to be the most psychotic the most sociopathic, the most, most narcissistic. And you, you and usually you have those moments where people are like, I had no idea. They were so kind to me, yet they just murdered this person over here. Hello. You know? Yeah. So it's one of those things like you never know who to fully trust and the concept of allowing yourself to get vulnerable only to have that used against you either in a emotional tactic or costing you your life. So... I guess that's what scares me the most is like the more I learn about psychology, the more I learn about people, the more I learn about these things that are happening in the world. It's trying not to let that get me jaded. So I'm afraid of bonding with new people, but instead utilizing it as a way to screen people, excuse me, more effectively. Um, so that way I can protect myself and the people I care about from potential threats. So that, <laughs> that is what scares me of how dark the world can really be. Um, especially when you're used to trying to living in a positive space, but then you see the darkness, but you can't let yourself get lost in it, if that makes sense. Oh, 150%. And that's why, like, one of the techniques that we learn in school, like, as, um, as counselors and therapists, is learning how to really reinforce our boundaries, but also be very firm in them. Because the types of people that we encounter, uh, like, that kind of sit across from us, nine times out of 10, they don't actively want to hurt anyone and are more likely to become the victims of violent crimes than, you know, other people are. It's more so just kind of understanding that although as an empathetic soul, mm -hmm. being aware of those signs when they show themselves, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Mm. That's first and foremost. You're allowed to give people leeway, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, people will tell you who they are and it's up to you to be able to kind of differentiate between wishful thinking and seeing them for the potential. And, you know, obviously we give people leeway, but yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, this was very interesting and very fun to talk to and actually got a lot of awesome opinions. But what I've noticed is that 
for all three of us so far, the scariest thing to us for fear is real life and our thoughts and the thoughts of others. And this is, this probably ain't going to help. It's just going to feed into the fear. But there is a YouTube show on YouTube that is so awesome that my cousin showed me like a year ago. And it is quite literally real life scary encounters and stuff. And it's cartoon drawings, but it's in people who narrate their stories. They're real life creepy encounters with people. And it's all real. And a lot of it, just niggas being wild. Niggas wilding. Niggas getting kidnapped. Niggas having multiple personalities and shit. Niggas seeing other niggas get killed. Niggas, oh, niggas actually brushing death just a little bit. Like if they were just there for a couple more minutes, they would have died. Some of the stories I've heard, I'm like, this ain't that bad. And then we hear like 10 more and it's like, oh, this is really bad. Oh, this is really scary. Oh my God, this all happened? This is all true? Oh my God. Why would you even let yourself be in this situation? Oh, they probably had no choice. Like that shit. Um, they're very addicting. So by all means, if you want to watch something spooky, just know real life is spooky already. Watch these videos. You'll realize. We'll find out. I'm going to piggyback off that for a second. Viewer discretion is advised for that channel. Oh, um, yes, yes. Discretion, trigger warnings. There might be conversations good, there that might be people. And also, um, something I've noticed, at least personally for me, be cautious of how much you listen to at one time. Because at least for me, if I listen to something that's very emotional or draining or traumatic for long periods of time, then it makes it, it takes an emotional toll on me and almost sometimes a physical toll and a mental toll on me and I have to recharge or I start feeling that secondhand trauma or secondhand um, emotional craziness. So be cautious of how long you listen to it and then what episodes you listen to and just, just be aware and then afterwards, do you watch something happy and frilly to bring you out of that mode? Kitten Academy. God damn. Oh god, I was gonna say Hammond. Kitten and Academy. Oh, what's it called? Kitten Academy. Kitten Academy? Like a kitten? Which, yes, it's you watch live streams of kittens playing in a sanctuary. It's amazing. Oh, um, I thought so, you thought the, the scary place was called oh, no, Academy. I was, I was like, wait, what? On the, uh, <laughs> on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you need to recover from all the scary and spooky stuff, Kitten Academy is a lovely thing to watch. Okay, I'm about to say, I'm like, what type of nonsense? Talk about scary <laughs> stories named Kitten Academy? Like, <laughs> Oh, man, I'm having a tab. Oh. Oh my god. On that note, you guys, thank you so much for like checking in with us in this week's episode of the Melanie Music's podcast during our official um spooky season start off. Like we had our welcome episode last week, but you know, this week we wanted to really dive into something like that spooky season related. So yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to catching you on next week's episode. So this is Cleo signing off. And this is Hallie, remember. When people show you who you are, who they are, believe them. And this is Quay. Remember, y'all, stand tall, always resemble royalty. And side two, trust no one. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Peace.